Okay, chapter R2, again R for just review, is factoring. And at the end of R1, we just sort of reviewed how to, how to multiply two polynomials together. Factoring is, is the opposite of that. All right, so factoring a polynomial Factoring a polynomial is the opposite of multiplying polynomials together. Alright, so that is, we're going to start off with a single polynomial and think about how can I write this polynomial as a product of two others. Alright, so that is... We try to write a single polynomial as a product of polynomials. Not necessarily two, what we'll is say of polynomials instead. Alright, so as an example, we'll start off with an easy one. Uh, example A, again, we'll, we'll just we'll start off with a very easy one. Uh, let's say, let's say someone asks you to factor, factor 15x squared plus 5. So how do you factor? Well, you look for common divisors for each term, right? And what I'll notice here is that 15x squared, I can divide that perfectly by 5, right? Because 5 goes into 15 three times. And this term, 5, is also divisible by 5. So I can write this actually as 5 times 3x squared, right? 5 times 3 is 15, uh, plus 5 times 1. We'll just write a straight line. Right, so I've sort of I've, I've, I've pulled this common divisor of 5 out of both terms, and then by distribution, well, this is actually just 5 times the leftover polynomial, 3x squared plus 1. And this is factored, right? It's now a product of two polynomials, 5, which is just a very simple polynomial, a constant term. Uh, it's a product of 5 times 3x squared plus 1. And if you were to multiply these together, if you were to expand this out, distribute this out as we did in the last section, you would get right back to here, 15x squared plus 5. So it really is the opposite of multiplying polynomials together. We start with a single polynomial and we write them as a product. Instead of taking two polynomials and multiplying them together to end up back here. All right, here's another example. Uh, let's say factor 3m cubed plus 6m squared plus 12m. Okay, so what can I divide all of the terms by? What is, what's common to all of them? Well, I could divide 3 by 3, 6 by 3, and, and 12 by 3. Right, so they're all divisible by 3, but I can actually divide them by a bit more than that. Uh, they're also all divisible by m, right? m goes into m cubed perfectly, uh, m goes into m squared perfectly, and m goes into m perfectly. So, so I can divide by more than just 3. I can divide by 3m. Right? So this first term is actually 3m times m squared. Right? If I multiply them together, 3m times m squared, I get right back to 3m cubed. Uh, the next term 6m squared is 3m times, times what? Uh, times 2 to get 6, and times m, m times m gives me m squared. And last but not least, 12m is 3m times, uh, I need 4 to get 12, and I already have the m here, so that's it, it's just 3m times 4. Alright, so if I were to factor this, well, I've got 3m common to every single term, so the 
which is 3m times m squared plus 2m plus 4. And this polynomial is now factored. Right? It's factored as one polynomial times another. Sometimes you'll still have stuff left in here that you can factor. Sometimes this expression, this polynomial, will be able to factor again. But in this case, uh, in this case, it doesn't look like I can. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that right now, actually. One more thing I'll say is in the future, again, this, this step right here, I won't usually write this step. Right? In fact, I uh, probably never will again. We'll just observe immediately from here, yeah, we can pull 3m out, so it must look like 3m times, and we'll do all the rest of the work in our head as we go through these things. Um, actually, yeah, before we factor trinomials like this, let me just point out a common factorization. Really, really common factorization that's worth remembering. Uh, a squared minus b squared. Usually known as a difference of two squares. All right? I've got one squared term minus another squared term, so it's a difference of two squares. Uh, this always factors. And it's worth just committing to memory exactly how it factors. It factors as a plus b times a minus b. And if you want, you can try just reading this now. You can foil this out, just read this out, and you'll see that these do indeed multiply together, multiply together to give a squared minus b squared. All right, so this is worth committing to memory, so you don't have to do this by hand ever again. Uh, so for example, let's say I had a uh, 4x squared minus y squared. Well, I know this factors now, because it is a difference of two squares. What are my two squared terms? Well, 4x squared is really 2x squared, right? 2 squared gives me 4, and x squared gives me x squared, so it's really 2x squared minus y squared. And what does that mean? Well, if I'm writing it in the form up here, one term squared minus another term squared, my a is 2x. Sorry, wrote that really, really small down there. Uh, a is 2x, and b is just y. So if I factor this as a difference of two squares, a is 2x, b is y, so we've got a plus b, 2x, plus y times a minus b, 2x minus y. And again, I urge you to check this. Uh, check that when you multiply these together, when you FOIL these or distribute or whatever, just multiply those two pro polynomials together. Uh, check that you do indeed end up back here at, at 4x squared minus y squared. You will, I promise. All right, so lastly, uh, we're going to factor slightly harder polynomials, right? We've done actually fairly easy examples so far, uh, factoring what's called a trinomial. Factoring trinomials. And I'll just write out the algorithm here, or the process for going through this uh, before we do an example. So to factor a trinomial, of the form. So what is a trinomial? Um, technically, you're allowed to have a coefficient times x squared as your first term, but I'm just going to go with my coefficient being 1. So it would be x squared plus bx plus c. And so what does this mean? It's a polynomial. Uh, my coefficient in front of x squared is always 1. Coefficient in front of x could be anything. It's just some, some, some number b. And my constant term is some number c. So to factor a, poly, a trinomial of this form, we look for two numbers whose sum is b. So I want two numbers that add together to give me b and multiply together to give c. So two numbers whose sum is b, 
and whose product is C. And so, for example, let's say I want to factor x squared minus 2x minus 15. Okay, so what's b in this case? Well, notice this is of the form plus bx. Here I have a minus, so you can think of this, if you want, as x squared, let me write an equal sign, instead of a bracket, right? You can think of this as x squared plus minus 2x plus minus 15, all right? Again, I won't usually write this step, but just to be totally clear, that means my b in this case is minus 2, and c is minus 15. Okay, so now a bit of trial and error comes in. I'm looking for two numbers that add together to give minus 2, and multiply together to give minus 15. So a bit of trial and error, you'll have to think about this maybe, but the more you do, the faster you get, and I know that, let's see, what do I want? Uh, 3 and 5, certainly, how are they going to work? Let's do minus 5 and plus 3. All right, if you add them together, you get minus 2. If you multiply them together, you do get negative 15. So that's what I'm looking for. And how is it going to factor? Well, this factors as x uh, plus the first number. These can be written in any order. So x plus minus 5, which I'll just write as x minus 5, times x plus the second number, x plus 3. Again, the order doesn't matter. Totally fine. Just write this as x plus 3 times x minus 5. All right, same thing. Either, either one of these is totally correct. So that's how you factor these trinomials, right? You look for two numbers, then add together to give you this coefficient, multiply together to give you that coefficient. And once you have it, you just have to remember how to write down the form. It's x plus the first number times x plus the second number. We'll do another example. All right, uh, we'll do, we'll go to m as our variable. m squared minus 4m plus 4. Alright, so how does this factor? If it does factor, not all polynomials factor, by the way, or not all trinomials, rather. They, they don't always factor, uh, but if you can, it will factor as m plus some number times m plus some number. And what are these numbers going to be? Well, these numbers are going to be two numbers that add together to give minus 4 and multiply together to give positive 4. What are my two numbers going to be? Well, it turns out in this case they're actually minus 2 and minus 2, right? Uh, minus 2 plus minus 2 is minus 4, and minus 2 times minus 2 is indeed positive 4. So this factors is m plus minus 2 times m plus minus 2, uh, which you could also write a little bit faster as m minus 2 squared. So this trinomial has been factored. All right, we'll do one more example here. Uh, last one of, of the section. We'll, we'll do sort of as hard as these get. Do an example as difficult as these can be. Let's say let's factor uh, 8x squared plus 14x plus 3. So this one is, is more tricky than the previous examples. Why? Well, because I don't have a 1 here. Right? I don't have a 1 in front of the x squared like, like in the other examples we're doing. And the algorithm I gave you for how to factor trinomials was only for trinomials of the form 1 times x squared plus bx plus c. So how do you deal with this extra 8 in front? Well, there's two ways you can go. One is you can just factor out the 8. right? So I'd write this as 8 times x squared plus, uh, if I pull an 8 out of 14, this would be 14 eighths left over. And an 8 out of a 3 would be 3 eighths left over. 
right? What do I need to multiply 8 by to get 3? Well, 3 8. Okay, so you could do this. And now you could continue factoring as we just were, right? Now you could look for two numbers that add together to give 14 eighths and multiply together to give 3 eighths. And you could factor just this polynomial here. It's doable, but it's kind of ugly in this example. And it's ugly because these are fractions, right? If I could factor out an 8 or whatever this number is and just have nice whole numbers here, sure, do that every time, right? It works really nicely, but I'm not going to go this route because uh, it doesn't work very well in this case. So here's something else you could do is, okay, so I know if this factors, it's going to look like something times something else. And I'm going to ask myself, these first two terms together, when I multiply them together, right, there's going to be an x and an x. When I multiply these together, that's the only way I get an x squared term, right? So how do I get an 8x squared term? Well, two ways. I could either do 8x times x, right, 1 times x, or I could do uh, I could do 4 times 2. <laughs> yeah, not very, my, my brain totally froze there. Uh, I could do 4x times, times 2x. Right, 4 times 2 also gives me 8. And now it really is trial and error, right? There, there is no nice algorithm I can give you for how to do this. Uh, plus something, and what I need is two numbers that multiply together to give me 3. Well, what multiplies together to give me 3, right? Because the last two numbers here, when I multiply them, I have to get this constant term. I have to get 3. What multiplies to give me 3? Uh, well, really just 3 and 1, or possibly minus 3 and minus 1. All right, so just trial and error here. I could try, okay, so 3 and 1, I could say uh, let's do plus 3 and plus 1, right? So if I multiply the first two terms together, I get 8x squared. That's great. If I multiply my last two terms together, I get the plus 3. That's great. But how many x's do I have? Well, I've got 8x times 1 is 8x plus 3 times x. So 8x plus 3x is 11x. Well, that didn't work because I need 14x, right? And I could try the other order. I could try doing minus 3 and minus 1, or I could try putting the 3 and the 1 here. But you'll see that this doesn't work either, right? This gives me 24x plus x is 25x's. So this option isn't going to work. So if it does factor, it factors like this. It factors as 4x times 2x is my first two terms. And I'm just going to try something here, 3 and 1. So I've got 4x times 2x is 8x squared. My last two terms, or my last term is 1, 3 is 3. Again, what do I have in the middle, though? Well, 4x times 3 is 12x, plus 2x is 14x. So this is indeed the answer that I'm looking for. All right, so how do you factor these more difficult ones? Well, again, you, you ask yourself, how many ways can I, can I multiply together to get 8? And we had two different cases, right? We had 8x times x, or 4x times 2x, and you have to think about both, both cases. And then what numbers multiply together to give my constant 3 and 1? And we just went through trial and error. That's really all you can do is trial and error and try and figure out uh, which way you can you combine these to get the right amount of x's in the middle. By the way, something I haven't really stressed through this because everything, every example we've done so far has factored, not all polynomials do factor. Right, you can't always factor. In these examples that we've done, they do factor nicely, but you can't always. And we'll stop here.